pretty funny picture to be fair. <laughs> Can I get in? And then he got it. Do the Q&A. Run, Mary. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Yo, what's up guys? It's Andre and Rachel here. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Um, before we go any further, be sure to like and subscribe. So after high demand, we have answered your questions on social media about us. Um, but we asked on Instagram and TikTok, so we are gonna answer as truthfully and honestly as we can. Maybe we should start how we met, just as a basic, but we will make a whole different video on like the actual long version of the story. But maybe just a rundown. Go on then. <laughs> how did we meet? Oh, <laughs> we met actually on TikTok, thanks to me though, um, but I actually, what I do, I commented on a post, right? Yeah. I kind of, I kind of was liking stuff before that, but then I finally built up the courage to actually comment. I commented, then you kind of hit me back, and I was like, oh, okay, well, shit, and then kind of just stayed on TikTok for the first, like, what, two weeks? Almost 10 days, like, exactly. That's two weeks. Yeah. No, a week is, two weeks is 14 days. Work weeks. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then you DM'd me. Then I moved over to Instagram, so you could kind of get an idea of who I was trying to, you know, show you who I was. Yeah, after that, it was FaceTime every single day. Yeah, I mean, and then without giving too much away, because we need to do a whole different video on that. Oh yeah, and we only FaceTimed a little bit. But, <laughs> yeah. We FaceTimed for 10 months, and then we met, and he came to the UK, which is where we are now at my house. Um, in London, so that's where we are. That's how we got here. Let's go with this one then. Second question. Did you have to think before you moved or was it a no-brainer? Um, did I have to think before I moved around the world to come meet this stranger for the first time? It didn't really actually like take that much thinking. It was more so, well, I mean, I wanted to do it and I knew I wanted to do it. Um, it was more so just to fit into what I was doing in life at the time and Everything just kind of timed out perfectly with where I was living, my living situation, the timing of getting out of my lease and stuff. So I did kind of hold off on coming here for probably a little bit longer than we both would have liked. I didn't really have to think too much about moving across the world to come meet Rachel. Uh, it was something I really wanted to do, but um, it had to be the right timing. When timing worked out and everything lined up, it was pretty much a no-brainer. Did you just ask Andre to live with you? And he basically said, okay then. Well, no, I didn't ask you to live with me, but at the same time, you weren't gonna fly over here and then stay in a hotel. Like, we knew that you were just gonna come here. But then, we didn't know that you could have got here, and it lasted two weeks and you were going home again. Well, it wasn't really a question, it kind of just happened because he stayed, and it has worked out. So, yeah. but it wasn't really a question, it was kind of a given, and I think living with each other isn't scary once you've... Alone across well, yeah, the world. As, as close as I felt like we were already without even meeting, I feel like my whole thing was I didn't want to just travel here, have it be exactly what we wanted it to be, and then have to pack up and leave. Literally, like even a month wouldn't have been long enough, you know. So, mm -hmm. what did your family say? Sorry, I'm just fully invested. And there was another question on TikTok. I think I there think. was one that said, "Like, did, did you, you tell, tell your, your families? Did, did you tell your family you were dating before meeting in person?" So yeah, my family knew. Your family knew. We basically met each other's family on FaceTime, really. Yeah. If you're FaceTiming someone every day for 10 months, your family's gonna know about it. I don't think they knew it was gonna happen to this extent. Right. I don't think my mom and sister and brother could have planned that I was just gonna leave, but then when they found out how much I really, like, cared for you and wanted to run after you on the other side of the world, they were very supportive of it, though. My mom's always been one to be like, yeah, chase your dreams, I support you as long as you're doing the right things, and getting there the right way, you know. And our friends, were pro they probably knew first. Our friends knew everything before, our families probably, because mm -hmm. they were with us all the time. Neither of us were living at home or live at home at that time that we were talking, so we were always around our friends. Whenever I was with always... my friends, I was on the phone with you because yeah. of the way that the, the time zones worked. My friends knew early on what the deal was. Okay, what was the biggest culture shock moving to the UK? I think I know the answer. Yeah, you probably do know. Um, I would have to say the food for me. I'm real big on my food. I love to cook. I love to go out and try new restaurants and just, I love food. I love to eat. I hope people don't get on my ass about this, but like, your guys' food just doesn't have as much 
like it's probably because it's more healthy it's more healthy there's not as much salt and sugar and added preservatives and stuff but it's just not as flavorful as far as like <laughs> the bad things that make food good you guys don't have as much of it in your food as we do so the food takes a little bit of getting used to for me but i'm starting to come around to it but we cook a lot also so yeah. we kind of have control over um what we're eating so are you gonna move to america or am i gonna move to the uk to be honest it's it could go either way right we will put out a whole different video probably talking about how the long yeah. distance relationship thing is you working and how, it's, and how it's gonna work because um the process that Rachel's been looking into is very deep and very hard. I have grown a love for the UK since being here and her friends and her family and stuff. Everybody's very nice and inviting. So I wouldn't have a problem moving over here to answer the question, I guess. Um, not for you, but from my perspective. Um, how would you feel about moving to the States if it fell into that situation where that was like easier? if that was the case yeah, like, just the conversations we've had we, and what we want to do with our life together and, and stuff like that the uk just makes more sense initially but i think long term i think we would go back there but i Love think it would there. but i think this is our first home mm -hmm. which i agree the uk will be our first home mm -hmm. and, and then yeah and then yeah eventually be able to just be Going back and forth here. Can you unlock that? I know the password. Don't do not do that. I know the password. I was going to say it's still I, just didn't even, I didn't think she got a new phone. Who takes longer to get ready? Me, obviously. I literally can get up out of bed and dress. And I do happen to put some shit together still in no time at all. Yeah, you surprise me how quickly you get ready. I'm not actually that bad. I can drag it out, but I'm not that bad. Rachel can't go to the grocery store. Unless she's got a whole outfit on. Like, we went to the grocery store, she had like a crop top, like, shirt, <laughs> jeans, and like Balenciaga's or like Jordan's, like Jordan 1's or something like that with some nice fucking posh trench coat. <laughs> I mean, I guess it doesn't have much to do with you getting ready, but you definitely put thought into what you're gonna do. Physical. Favorite qualities about each other? Non physical. You go first. <laughs> Why do you have to think of it too hard? No, I just wanna hear what she had to say. Favorite non physical qualities? You're a very giving person, not just with me, I don't with with me, I mean just in everyone, like your friends and stuff like that. Like anyone could come to you with anything and you help them. So I would say that you're a very generous person. My generosity is something that you admire, huh? Yeah, I like that mm, you always like, are there for your friends and stuff. No, I try to be. You always, you always think about me, like you're always considerate of like whatever I might want or how I want it or what I like or if you're doing something you don't just think about it for yourself you think about it for the both of us which I think is really great very big heart um, yeah I think it's just that you you think about me when you think about doing anything even if it's in the kitchen to grab something or if it's mm -hmm. if you're out and about you're always calling and checking on me to make sure I don't need anything or if I do need something I really, I don't know if I had that in people in quite a while, so it's really nice to have it in the person that I'm with. I guess it could go also saying generous, generosity. Like, you know, your friends look to you for things also. People mm -hmm. do come to you with a lot of stuff and you're kind of like the mom of your friend group. I'm not gonna say I'm like the father of my friend group because my friends will get on my ass about <laughs> that. I'm nobody's dad, but you know, I feel like we both are kind of like that for the people that no, it was like, you know what's crazy though is I, I've always been good at giving advice, never took my own advice, but then I started taking yes, my same. own advice and it got us here, got me to you. So I must, I must give decent advice. <laughs> oh, I can add ambition. That's what I do. That's what I always liked about you though. Cause I can't stand people that don't have like goals or anything. That's a good one. I like, I can't, especially when I was like dating, I can't stand guys that go like, oh, what do you want to do in the next like five, 10 years? And they have no idea and they don't know what they want. Yeah. Whereas when we met, you were very like, I want this. Like even just ambitions of like having a family, like you're very like, no, I'm gonna have a family. I don't mean like you're gonna become a billionaire. But right. It's like simple, like yeah. simple ambitions that a lot of people don't think about, mm -hmm. especially guys. So yeah, that's a non-physical. I do love that you just have your shit together. Like you have real structure in your life without me being in it, which is one of the things I was like, noticing in you which I was like growing to like a lot about you and you're just very responsible you're very on top of things you're not 
lazy, you're very motivated with just like getting the day going, even though you do tend to sleep in longer than I thought you would. Yeah, person, no, once I'm up, I'm up. You do love to I sleep just in. take a while to get up. You sleep like you got three kids and five jobs <laughs> and work full weeks. I have a kid. <laughs> that it's, it's really refreshing to have someone who has like real structure and real like just you hold yourself to a certain standard, which I think is really, really great. Love that about you. Mm -hmm. How does Andre feel with the content you post? Is he okay with underwear pictures, etc.? To be real, how do I feel about the content you post? I love it. I think it's great because that's what like, that's what like, that's how I first saw you. And know, I was just like, oh wow, like she's so fine. It's not so much as I'm worried about what you're posting. It's the fact that I can have you in my life and see you post that kind of stuff and know that like I have someone that is genuinely posting it because like. That's what you do for work, that is your job, and like you do set your work aside from like your normal life. You actually do it with a purpose and you have an end goal, and I think that's great. So the fact that we have such a good trusting relationship, I don't have any insecurities about what you post, nor will that ever come into something that was already going on before I got here, mm -hmm. and try to like say. bring an end to it. Like you were doing that before I got here, and I don't think any of it's like very inappropriate either. Okay, when did we know it was getting serious? When did you know it was getting serious? When I started getting bothered by things. <laughs> I think, when was it? I sent, I think I got bothered by something and sent you a message. And probably the, like... No, you told me you tried to even push me away at times. Yeah, I think that's when I realized. I'm Can you believe this? She tried to, she tried to push me away because it was getting like, yeah, I guess that's when it was getting real. So I think that was like five, six months then, I think. We'd met in the January and I think I sent that message kind of like May, June, June time. Yeah, it was probably around the same time for me also, because I'm so mental sometimes. I was there was times earlier on where I was like, yeah, that's my girlfriend. Like, yeah, that's for sure. Like, da, da, da. but obviously, like, not like that wasn't the reality of it quite yet. But there was times where I did like think it was way more serious than it probably was for you, and I had to like chill out. But I never tried to push you away though. You were way more cool with it though than I was, but yeah, I'm that's cool. a different conversation. I'm cool. I'm cool, calm, and collected, baby. <laughs> How does this relationship, our relationship, compare to our last? Like, as far as like my last public real relationship that I was in, um, this one is much more responsible, more adultish, um, much more mature. Not as much pressure. Like, I just felt like there was just too many people involved in my last relationship. Uh, there was no trust on either side. Um, I wasn't perfect by any means, but this relationship is definitely something that I've never had before or felt about somebody so that's kind of also how I knew like oh I have to I have to try to like really make this work with everything I got. I mean for me without even going I don't want to dwell and go into details but I think for me a big thing is trust that I lacked in my last relationship so for me having that with you was big because I think yeah I was worried that I was gonna bring issues into this but to be reassured that I didn't have them and or you didn't trigger that in me was like a good thing for me and reassuring when I met you and I also think that we're better at communicating as well you're not defensive and like if there was an issue we can talk about it that's when I knew I grew up for sure able to address something that I wasn't happy with not that we've had anything that was like detrimental or me being able to like confront the situation and like talk to things like talk through things with you about stuff compared to my past relationships certain things like either wouldn't be talked about or when they were brought up the way that they were handled was just like a small little tick 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 and then all of a sudden like a big explosion and yeah it's a learning curve any relationship you're in so we can only be grateful that both of us went through that because then this wouldn't work so mm. what are our star signs you gotta answer my shit for me all i know is yeah. i'm an aquarius <laughs> i don't know my rising moon and my no, setting we sun don't know, <laughs> we don't know your exact um time of birth we need your time of birth anyway but he's an aquarius and i have a pisces we're two different star signs but we are only seven days apart because i'm right on the cusp of the end of aquarius and the star of pisces so oh and someone wanted to know our age so i guess that's relative so i was born in 97 you were born in 95 mm -hmm. so we are two years apart so you do the math so a girl DM'd me rather than putting it in like the question box because it was a little bit longer and she wanted like advice more than a question but she's in, she is in a similar situation. So advice on being in a long distance situation, we've not met yet, and getting mad over them liking slash following girls or flip side, where do you draw the line when you've not met yet and you don't know what's going on? Didn't look for it because I've learned so much through 
past experiences with social media and how it can literally poison and taint a good relationship. I've learned not to look. It's really hard not to though when you get so like caught up in it because once you look once, you wanna look again and then it's like a whole obsession of like checking. I don't care what he was doing before he got here and then to when he landed because he had no commitment to me until he landed really. As long as you're not doing that shit after we have met, mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like I was okay with it because we had no comment, we didn't know what was gonna happen, we didn't even know if we were gonna get here and this was gonna work. Right. So unless you have had a conversation, then someone goes against that, then that is disrespectful. Personally, I just draw the line from when we've met and I think from there on. What does Rachel think of your music? My eye is twitching, it's really annoying. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think of my music? I like and your music. Don't sugar no, it I do either. like your music. I have my favorites. Don't get me wrong, I have my favorites. Listen, she when we get in the car, you know you plug your car and the music to your car, a song always comes on. We all have a song we all just thought about when you say you get in the car, you plug your phone in, and there's always that song, right? <laughs> Hers happens to be one of my songs. We'll get in the car and it's just like, oh my god, I got just changes my okay, shit. That's not because Instantly. I don't like it. It's because it's that song that comes in all the time. Don't get me wrong, I've played that song a lot and that's probably why it is that song, but it it is an, a little bit, you've, you've even done it yourself, it is annoying. Your music is my cup of tea. Like in terms of, I listen to a lot of R&B and hip hop stuff, so it falls into that. I like your music. I'm a fan, I would be a fan if I didn't know you. That's interesting. I'm not just being your fan because you're my boyfriend. Okay, um, last question. What's the channel? gonna be about what will we, what will we be talking about and putting out there for people I mean I think it's just gonna be a little closer look at us and then also help people out along the way that might be in a similar situation that we're in I mean I think we'll just do whatever people are like most responsive to so whatever you want to see like make sure you let us know but even just like little other vlogs and stuff like that what we get up to our little routines that we have. We can do separate things as well, like you can do your own videos, I can do my own videos for the girls. Right now, we're open to any suggestions and we don't know what we're gonna be putting out, so that's on on you guys, I guess. In the next video, we will go into detail about how we met, how that all came about, maybe we'll show like, we have some screen recordings and stuff from our conversations, and yeah. turns out you can find someone on TikTok, so. On the other side of the world. <laughs> And I got stuck at, uh, what's it called? Immigration. I got an immigration story also, but we'll save that for the next video. So yeah, thanks for watching the video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Share with somebody. Leave a comment if you feel like it. We're going to go to uh, a little dinner with our friends. Yeah, we've got dinner now.